Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Church Mag, and we have another Minecraft episode for you guys. This week we're actually going to get into a little bit of actual setup. Last time I just gave a little tour for you guys, but I actually want to do some stuff this week. Also, I want to talk to you guys, since we are using gaming, I wonder what is it like for Christians to be gamers? Is that even something that should be talked about? So I figure we can jump in first of all. Let me show you my project I'm working on. Is this still light out? It is, good. All right, it's probably, uh, we got beds. We finally got beds. So I have a whole bunch of sheep. Finally wrangled them all up. But there's a couple of chickens in there. The problem is creepers have come by. And lots and lots of creepers came by. So I have been trying to figure out how best I want to be able to put together a pen. I have an idea. I don't want uh, the night to come. So I might actually just show you a generic setup and then transfer them after the day comes. So... Um, let me see, where's, I put all my stuff over here. So I want to make a pen so that I can get to all of them, but not have to worry about creepers coming around blowing me up. Eric's doing a really good job over here of having a gate up, um, just to protect ourselves from everything. He's kind of going with the castle look here. He is really the creative one in all this. I am just the guy that loves redstone and loves just to kind of grind things out. So we'll see how this kind of looks after everything's done but for right now I need to set this up to protect myself um, whenever I'm going in here and shearing the sheep and collecting all the eggs so I want to set up two different pens I'm going to do the one, first one on camera the second one I'll just do later um, but while we're doing that gaming is it's one of those things it's weird conversation with people because I feel like there's two dichotomies in all this the first dichotomy is people that simply don't like gaming. They are just not fans of gaming. And I understand that. That makes sense. Yet, the problem with this is that it's really hard to have a conversation when only half of the group is actually experienced in the conversation. Um, I think for me, it takes the experience, without the experience of a situation, it's hard to have an educated conversation. Hopefully that makes sense. I know that there's a whole theology around that that can be problem, problematic in the sense of not everything has to be known. And so, ooh, that's me. Um, and so not everything has to be known. But I think that gaming is one of those things that it does have to be known. It does have to need to be figured out. And so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this as far as do you need to be able to have done gaming to even have a voice in the conversation? Um, I don't think you do, um, but I do think that to be able to understand everything that is gaming and not make wild implications is important. And so, I, th that's my initial precept, is it, it feels like it's us versus them kind of a conversation as opposed to maybe we should figure out the best kind of conversation to have with this. So I think that that's, I think that that's a difficult first step. Um, now let's assume that the people in the conversation all at one point have gamed in their life um, and then some of them are for it, some of them are against it. Um, for me, it, it becomes, there, there's two big things I am for and there's two big things that I'm against. Um, and just to know my background, I used to be a youth worker. Um, I was uh, very inclusive as far as utilizing gaming in my ministry. Uh, I think it was a great way to get my ministry it did focus a lot on discipleship, but it also focused a lot on trying to be able to reach the lost. And so for me, that was a huge... Oh, shoot. I set this up wrong. It's only three wide. It's supposed to be five wide. Hmm. I can deal with that. So it's just one of those things where it's really difficult to have a... Have a ministry that for teenagers that does not include gaming. I'm going to go take a nap real quick. Um, because there's a lot of teenagers that just whenever they're home, they ignore homework and they just simply go and play, play, play. And so uh, it's not a be in the world but not of the world kind of mentality. It's just simply recognizing that that's where they're at. And so sometimes you have to work with that. I want to show you guys up here. He has a whole entire thing going on up here. I like it. So anyways... For me, there's two aspects of this that I, I really am concerned about. First of all, the violence. Um, I'm not going to get into the debate of people that play violent games have more violent tendencies. 
um, because sometimes that's just the precursor to playing violent games. Sometimes it has a lot to do with the desensitization. Um, there's a lot of great studies out there, and I would say that those should be the forefront in the conversation of um, does that make people bad? Um, but I would also say that in this conversation, it becomes really difficult whenever you are looking at how should Christians interact because our hearts are supposed to be towards God. Um, and for me, if it becomes something that is a focus and is taking away from life in general, then it's a bad thing. And so I think a lot of the violent tendency games, a lot of the MMO games can do that. I mean, Minecraft could do it if you let it. Um, and so that's something to be wary of. But could it actually be a ministry aspect? I absolutely think so. So here's the second part of this conversation is, so there's the violence, the do you want to be able to put that in front of your kids? There's a lot of um, people out there that are very conservative and you don't want to mess with that, especially if you have pastor's kids in that ministry, but also just in the general understanding that why are you, if you're not going to subject yourself to people that are swearing all the time, um, that's not your main crowd, um, why would you do that for gaming as well? Um, that being said, I think that um, this can be a huge witness for some people. The other aspect is just how much you are diving into, and that's that was what I had said before. Are you actually leaving time for you yourself to be able to share Jesus with people? And if you're just playing games to play games and you're not actually witnessing to people, then it's really not worth it. I mean, for me, uh, doing this community aspect is a great way for me to say, okay, you love Jesus, you love video games, so let's let's see if we can kind of hang out together. Um, and, and there's just kind of a good little bonding that comes of that. But I don't think that that happens with every video game that happens out there. And, and for some people, it's just a video game to play a video game. Um, so for me, there, there's a problem there as well. Oh, crap. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Mm, okay. Whew. Um, so I would love to hear what you guys have to say on this as well. Um, I think that this is an important thing. Um, so leave your guys' comments below. Do you think video games should be a part of your ministry? Now, I, this is a ministry whether you're a youth pastor or a layperson, whether you're a volunteer or you are simply just trying to figure out what Jesus wants you to do in your life. So leave your guys' comments below. I'm going to finish this real quick, and I'll show you guys a quick result at the end of this. See you in a minute. All right, guys, here's what I came up with. If you kind of look at, we have the edge going around this thing. Keeps the creepers out. Um, but it, it was as much a problem, ah, come on. It was as much a problem about trying to keep the creepers out as it was to keep the animals in. And so I would be here trimming all the sheep or collecting the eggs and the creeper would blow up. And then everything went haywire. So this just simply allows for getting the animals in there like I need to. But then it also keeps me enough distance that I can just do what I need to do here. And I actually have to go in and not have to worry about the creeper. And if it does blow up, then I can fix this. And I have to worry about everybody escaping. So I'm going to light this up real quick. Um, so this is kind of my little quick setup until Eric is able to get the, I guess, the protective ring around the whole thing. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not going to wait until night. I'm going to just assume it's all lit up well. Everything will be... Hunky dory, and you know what happens when you assume. Getting a little lag here. Uh, but I think this is actually pretty good. I think everything will work out. Move, chicken, move. I think that's good enough. Um, and you can just come in here, jump down there, collect the eggs. Uh, when that one grows up, feed it a bunch of seeds, let them repopulate. Uh, I think that we're going to use a ton of ton of seeds for the chickens because we want to get feathers. Uh, we'll still use a bunch of stuff for the sheep. We want to get the wool, but we already have a pretty good set of wool going. So I don't, I don't know how much that'll be necessary. Jeez, come on. So I, I think the sheep are going to just kind of be here. Um, I have a workbench over there if need be. I have a chest for actual shears so anybody can come use it that needs it. Um, and I did put the ladders in because if I ever fall down there, I don't have to worry about just accidentally going straight up. Um, it, it just, I have to jump to get to it. So I think that's a pretty good setup, at least for myself. Um, at least the way I do the Minecraft setup. I'd love to see if you guys actually have your own. 
um, a, a screenshot or even just a quick video tutorial. Let me see if you guys have any one any that are better. Um, but this is my own setup. And again, from before, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about gaming because I don't think I think that this is just brushing the surface. I grew up wanting to do Mario, and that was my life initially. I spent a lot of time playing Mario, and then uh, I skipped some of the other generation stuff that came out. But I think that it just depends on what it is you're doing. Um, what is the, the overall goal of things? I think that there's a lot of iPhone games out there, Candy Crush, um, that I wouldn't say are gamers. Um, but I would say that they have a lot of time spent on gaming. Um, Farmville, that was a huge Facebook thing for a while. Same thing, I think that you could have problems with that. Um, but I think something like Minecraft, um, implementing into a ministry, and I'll talk about this more later, but implementing it into a ministry, what if you could set up your own Minecraft server for your youth ministry, and the only time that they can play it is an after-school special or something like that. And um, there can be whole rules set up against again behind it, but what if you could actually implement it so that you could actually have an outreach and there was there was christian things going on in the sense of biblical studies of prayer and stuff like that but then there was also the aspect of let's just game and, and there's concerns behind that with bait and switch and we'll get a bit inside a bunch of this later um if you want to leave me a comment about that you can or or just tell me how is it that your church is using or is not using gaming um i don't think that this is a one-size-fits-all kind of thing for every church, especially different denominations. Um, and there might be hesitations. There actually might be church rules against it that I don't know about. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, leave your YouTube comments or the blog comments, and we will talk to you guys next time.